Today we are going to throw away years of Lore Master's hard work by using randomizer mods. Our units will be random. All starting positions for every faction. Random. And our survival. Unlikely. Unlikely. Now let's crank up these difficulties and get started. We are the Tomb Kings, except instead of the desert, we start off chilling in Ohio. <laughs> our first order of business will be laying off all of our calcium deficient employees milk. and hammering this button to generate a new completely random army instead. Perfect. Now that we are completely broke, we can begin voyaging off, much like the mighty Buddha himself, leaving behind our status and land in seek of enlightenment of the soul. I mean, also, a side goal is to kill everyone in the desert and take back the sand dunes to which we are entitled, but you know, same difference. By turn 8, we were deep into martial territory when I noticed we were losing much cash because the Ohioans are burning jerseys again on our land. So I did some quick math and destroyed our home, saving us 70 coin per turn. A genius move. Except for the part where our army is now slowly dying because they are homeless. I guess now we just have to run full sprint to the desert before our whole army commits die. On turn 16, we finally washed up on Tyrian shores, luckily before any significant damage could be done to our people. Step one of conquering the desert would be declaring war on Etine, so I attacked their port and threw rocks at them until they gave up. Then on turn 22, I approached the Dragonborn Mines, but there were tons of people garrisoned. Auto Resolve wanted to kill two people, but there was no way I was going to let that happen. Instead, I got three units killed including our team manager, forcing us to replace the mighty Cetra with TombKing.jpg. And in more news, our new unit is a dog. Go. 60 dogs, actually. And I just have one thing to say to you. <laughs> Following our corporate restructuring, we then took the final piece of Etine Lin and a rat pizza wheel joined our roster. <laughs> Before I could get a chance to try them out, Throg killed the final Etine army and destroyed their faction for good. Now for more pressing issues, the Waldo faction is raiding our land, so we are going to follow him back to his land and oh, twist my arm. I guess I'll kill you all. Do you know why they brought us here? I assume it has something to do with that rock. What rock? Our rat wheel is also an MVP player for the team. He's like a T-posing forklift driver that transports enemy heroes while inspiring our giant rock to get more exercise. But enough tomfoolery. It is time to continue our campaign so that we can take back our true home of Kemri. Scratch that. It's time to continue southeast to take no moss. Taking no moss was easy. But we lost an irreplaceable unit during this siege. And this army's just never gonna be the same. We might as well quit. The game's over. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Anyways, it's time to replace the unit. Now that our army was whole again, it was time we got back out there onto the field. But as soon as we left Nomas, a whole army attacked our new city. And now we have to walk all the way back, kill this army, and you know what? You've just made an enemy for life, pal. I'm putting the Waldo faction aside for now. So we took Qatar, and after that, the springs of eternal life. Then I leisurely walked towards their next pyramid while they threw themselves at us. But nothing can stop a Sigma male from accomplishing his goal. There is really no resistance from these betas until turn 50 struck. As I was losing my mind with all of the cavalry we keep getting, a volcano erupted and our troops were all going to get their HP cut in half the very next turn. Yet despite the fact that we had magma, magma drip all over all of our units, this did not stop us from taking the pawn port or the pawn port city for that matter because we had already put most of the fawn armies to sleep. However, once we arrived at the Black Tower of Arkham, it said Valiant Defeat because the random dice what? was giving us cavalry. So I had to angrily march off looking like a fool, searching for any enemy land that we could take. And as we began marching north, I heard aggressive accordion music in the distance. Jesus, it can't be. Hell, Satan. The Red Frenchman from Ulthwan that declared war on us 40 turns ago before we even reached the desert all ad chased us down and are now attacking our land. But you see, that's all the way over there. And we're all the way over here. Are you starting to see the issue? So let's just put a pin in that and take Gorgonzola. Then we're gonna take this other place. And now that we've done all that, I think it's about time to return to our home of Kemri. Except this time, I had the brilliant idea to throw on my John Cena Snuggie to lure out the garrisoned army, clap them, and then take Kemri for ourselves. And all it took was letting everyone take everything we have around us while we spent five turns setting up a single play. Nice. But now that we have our home, we will kill every faction that tried to stop us from getting it. And we're gonna start with these orcs up here. But then as soon as I went up there, there were more down here. But before I could grasp oh, them and give them a shaking, our oozing masculinity made them run for the hills. And I followed them like a heat-seeking missile to this pyramid where they tried to get us to stop following them by showing us impressive architecture. Unfortunately, that was not enough. So we rolled them and collected all of the money. And by money, I mean fuel for my gambling addiction. That's right, it's time to spin! spin. 
And can you guess which one of these options we got? Well, if you guessed cavalry, then you'd be correct. Now let's fire two cavalry and try again. To make this very clear, I'm looking for any unit other than cavalry. And we're back. As it turns out, the Fawn have one settlement left, and it's very conveniently located right over there. So we approached with great caution, but upon getting into range, we noticed that there was a skeleton summit happening right now at their pyramid. Me bone. Let's attack one of these side armies so that we can do a field battle, and our cavalry can do absolutely anything at all, in contrast to sieges where they're useless fuck. Apologies, you didn't deserve that. We won that field battle, destroyed the fun, and inflated our egos in the process. But best of all, with this major annoyance gone, we can finally refocus on extinguishing the baguette-eating, beret-wearing, macaroon-munching French that spent the last 10 turns taking everything we have. Oh, I can't wait. Nope. You know, I don't trust little things like that. So instead, I move towards the Dwarf Pyramid to steal their land and money. Listen to me, you knife, you piece of shit. But as soon as we got into range, well, you this. Shit so hard. But I don't trust the little things like that. And I kept moving north until I happened upon the Blue Vipers. Finally, an enemy that was beneath us. I declared war, took both of their territories, and at this point, I kind of assume we got them all. So I moved our army north to the doorstep of a different orc, ready to start another war the very next turn. Then a two-unit Blue Viper army took a settlement from me. But I don't sweat the- die, 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 you walks. We got our land back, and even found a whole second secret army that they Welcome had waiting the in the right weeds. Field, and this was a battle I was particularly proud of, because I did it all in slow motion. Look at this throw right here. Perfect form, perfect release, and the hit landed perfectly. He's like the Michael Jordan of rock throwing- Stop it. Get some stop it, Michael Jordan. And take a look at this pizza wheel. Or, you can feel the difference. With that, I think we actually killed them all for good that time. So I made my way east into the Short King Kingdoms of the East. We started by declaring war on this little hey, fella. We'll come. But to my surprise, this was a city siege and it says valiant defeat. So for four turns, I just kept making towers until adding more towers wouldn't make a difference. Then to avoid a slaughter of pretty much all of our army, we fought the battle manually. And of course we won, losing only two infantry units and not the whole army. Then we attacked their other settlement, wiping those doors off of the map for good. At this point, there was no reason to continue going east as me and the rat that lived there were homies. Just as I was about to leave, I saw a dwarf faction taking land from our new rat friend. This is unacceptable, but before we take any action, I need to spin the wheel real quick. Get us? Now we were ready to attack, so I engaged with the small folk. However, Auto Resolve wanted a rat for a rat, and I would never turn my back on family. So I decided to roll the dice and handle this matter myself, and the dice pulled out a gun and shot me. I've never seen a power meter swing that quick in my life. We lost the battle, half of our army, our level 20 leader, and our confidence. But hey, hey. at least the pizza wheel didn't die, right? Right? I was afraid of fighting the French before, so I avoided it, and this led to us getting our fate run by the short kings. But now, as Confucius once said, it's time to nut up or shut up. So we voyaged back to our pyramids, buy pulled self, off some financial self, maneuvers, self. and began rebuilding our armies to be stronger than ever before. But with the random units costing so much and us having very little time, I decided to expedite our economy by stripping the copper from the walls of all of our settlements and turning them into $16,000. Then we used all that funding to finish rebuilding our army and begin building a second for the first time ever in this campaign. And now, we attack! Why are you running? Shit! I forgot they could do that. The French quickly got to work on our land, but this doesn't matter. So we continued south to take theirs, then once we took this place, there was some land nearby that I've been wanting for a very long time. And now, we're gonna take it! No, we aren't. So instead, we continued to rip through the southernmost territory, and as our tales of glory spread, enemies began fleeing at the sight of our armies. Then I spotted a French army near our armies, and I said, why not? So we snuck up on them one turn at a time, and clapped them as soon as they took our city. Then I got a glimpse of another army across the pond, so we went into ambush mode, and another one bought the dust. The tides of war were shifting in our favor, so we started tearing north, taking out the Black Towers, then the Pools of Despair, and shortly after, Bel Air. As I marched towards Towards our next target, I could taste the victory in the air, <laughs> as well as a bit of sand. But just as we grew near, three full armies appeared from the ether. I was able to kill one, then I charged another, sending him running away, which uncovered another army in the darkness. All we could do at this point was huddle our troops together and form an ambush. But I tried to move forward just a smidge more, and a smidge turned into a smudge. 
and we leave so far that we could no longer ambush. They devastated our army and it didn't do anything to the power rankings. Even after taking their city and recharging our troops, I knew more evil loomed to the darkness and that our end was drawing near. Then, a miracle happened. Nagarond is here to save us. Tears were ringing through the streets. They came in raising land and turning those French into French fries. I can't believe it. We're gonna win. We're gonna take back our home. What's the- hang on, hang on, what's this? Oh no. Now quick, before the Canadians kill us all, go watch this video where Ohio declares war on everyone and then invades them, spreading glorious Ohio State anthems to the world. We don't have much time. Go!